if you get a good rank in gate like a top 200 rank or a top 500 rank or if you get an ms from a top university in the us then you are in a small pool of students who are first of all admitted amongst a, lo- a very competitive competition you are admitted in the from the crowd you are standing out when some fishers are entering into this industries but uh, they have no knowledge because academic i mean it is not possible to stay in academic to learn more about big data because they do not have that much of resource as you mentioned cluster and all those kind of thing so what would be their approach when a fresher is joining in such industries or when they are searching for jobs in such industries don't chase big companies don't chase big salaries don't chase big job titles just focus on making yourself better now a data scientist is not an entry level job it's usually a mid senior level job which a bachelor's degree and two years of work experience in analytics so data scientist brings everything into the picture not just programming but also business knowledge and communication skills they can join a company find something that you're passionate about in life and they give you a job maybe the salary won't be that good and then on the side up skill maybe a master's degree online at the same time as you're working start your company in maybe the IT or IT or some software engineering when in yourself that you've made a strong base a foundation for you thanks chirag for joining us in today's yeah, session sure. so we are going to have a uh, lots of interesting discussions on your career journey on your work and the vacancies in this field for the freshers and if you have any important things to convey for them so starting with uh, first of all let's start that you have uh, completed your graduation from yeah. manipal institute of technology and then from there you went to stanford so my first question is that uh, why did you suddenly choose stanford I mean, did you get any f- fellowships or s- something yeah i mean yeah yeah so just a quick uh, correction on that so uh, i earned a bachelor of engineering degree in mechanical engineering from manipal institute of technology in manipal and then i moved to northeastern university in boston to do my masters degree in operations research with a focus on statistics and data mining and i earned 20% of that degree from stanford because i i i attended a summer session in statistics at stanford university where i took some courses in machine learning and data mining in data science so i transferred credit for about four of those to three of those courses from stanford to northeastern so i earned 20% of my degree from stanford university and currently i'm pursuing my second master of science degree in computational data analytics from georgia tech which is now also ranked highly in the world for data science and analytics so uh, so right now i'm a georgia tech student and i'm close to graduation and i'll be graduating in uh, in like uh, in like august 2025 so um what is this transferable degree i mean you mentioned that you have 20% degree from stanford yeah i have earned 20% of my degree from stanford so so what is this thing i mean this is not possible in india i think i don't know if it's possible or not but i i, I was able to transfer credit for some of the graduate courses which i took at stanford to my degree at northeastern university so how i mean uh, so when you are applying for i mean when you are mentioning on your cv so uh, so 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 you mention both the institute name stanford and northeastern university yeah yeah and uh, why you were i mean what makes you think that you should go for a second masters degree and what i mean what is your suggestion i mean is it okay to go for um, uh, another master degree yeah so my career journey has been quite different so i did a bachelor's in mechanical engineering and uh, i found that it's not truly something which i'm passionate about i was always passionate about numbers and mathematics and statistics and algorithms which is why i went for a masters degree in operations research because i had taken the operations research course in my undergrad and i always found that interesting and intriguing and i and i loved some of the algorithms like the simplex algorithm hungarian assignment method big m method duality and sensitivity analysis and then in 2015 when i was in stanford that's where i learned more about data mining and analysis statistical learning theory of investment portfolios and derivative securities i learned more about data mining and machine learning 
And R was the first language that I started coding in. I learned more about machine learning and statistics applied to different types of data. And that's where I grew interested in data science and analytics. And then uh, when I came back to Northeastern from Stanford, I did eight months of master's research on the, the time series forecasting and data mining of tornadoes in the United States, where I used different machine learning algorithms to forecast the location of tornado strike and also their severity and intensity using machine learning and time series. And uh, I got a job offer from Aon in 2016, where I worked for Aon for around four years, five years in impact forecasting, the catastrophe model development center of excellence at Aon. And, uh, and, and around 2019, that was when I thought that I want to learn more about computer science and big data. And that's where I applied to Georgia Tech for a master of science in analytics with a focus on computational data analytics. The master of science in analytics track, uh, the degree program is, a, is an online program and it's got three tracks, business analytics, analytical tools and computational data analytics. Computational data analytics is the computer science and big data and AI track. And I chose that track because I was interested to transition in, as, into a job as a data scientist as, a, as opposed to a catastrophic modeling analyst, which I was when I was working at Aon. So I, so, I'm, so I transitioned to a data scientist job and currently I work as a staff data scientist in a semiconductor manufacturing company in India. And I'm about 80% completed with my degree at Georgia. So as you have mentioned about R programming language, so did you find any interpretations? I mean, you, you have also have industry experience. So yeah. is it R only confined on academic or do you have find some significant interpretations of learning R? Programming? It's used a lot in the uh, geospatial industry, the catastrophic modeling industry, the insurance industry by actuaries. Actuaries like using R, you know, as opposed to Python. Yeah. And, but, but I moved to Python ever since, and I feel that Python is the better language. <laughs> it's definitely more scalable and more stable and you can and uh, optimize the practice. Yeah. Why yeah. do you use language? So um, as you have, I mean, you have uh, lots of diverse experience working on different fields, catastrophe modeling, insurance, healthcare, travel, semiconductors you're currently working on. So. And do you think that uh, moving between these uh, different industries, I mean, there are, this thing has influenced your approach to your data science and analytics over time? Yeah, it definitely has because these different industries each have a different uh, definition of what sensitive data is. Because where I currently work in the semiconductor manufacturing industry, everything is considered classified. So it's not possible to speak about your work outside the company. Whereas in healthcare and travel and tourism and catastrophic modeling and insurance, there's no such barrier which prevents you from speaking about your work outside. And also in the catastrophic modeling industry, it's a lot about natural storms and catastrophes like tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires, etc. And using statistics and machine learning to model these disasters. In insurance, it's more about actuarial statistical distributions and reproducing the results of published actual research papers in the area. In healthcare, it's more about writing SQL queries and pulling data for stakeholders, summary reports, and also building machine learning models to model customer behavior in the healthcare industry for your, for your company. And in travel and tourism, it's more about like it's marketing, like structuring marketing strategies for your company's customers and how they're utilizing the company's products. And in semiconductor manufacturing, it's more domain specific and I'm not allowed to speak about the projects that I'm working on. So I can't give more guideline, but it's traditional machine learning and AI and deep learning as well. What is the common link that you found that, uh, because in different industries, when you are work background, you also need that much of uh, expertise on that. So what is the common thing that you found that this is in your niche and based on that? The, the common thing is your approach. The approach has to be thorough that you check your assumptions of your model repeatedly, that you don't celebrate success too early, that you make sure that you're structuring your machine learning tests in such a way that the results make sense and, and, uh, and that your hypothesis is sound and that the tests that you're doing are logical and, and, and the distribution you're fitting fits the data. The empirical distribution you're fitting must be a good, good fit to the data and the test that you're doing, your hypothesis must be proved correct or wrong. And you mustn't celebrate too early until you reach that conclusion. 
So it's a very exact science. And uh, what I've learned is that not to celebrate too early and that the data can be misleading sometimes. And one must do thorough and deep, deep dive analysis before deciding or making up one, one's mind on anything temporarily or fast. One must do a slow, deep dive analysis and then make up the mind once the, once the evidence is insurmountable in that direction. So, uh, in all those industries, maybe you, you also have to encounter big data where people use some, some other kind of softwares, uh, maybe yeah. Hadoop or something. I have encountered that at Walgreens where I worked in the healthcare industry. I've encountered big data with 40 billion records of data. And for that, we were using the cloud like Databricks, Microsoft Azure Databricks and Databricks has a great repository of notebooks. It's got notebooks in data science and engineering, machine learning and Databricks SQL. And my job was to write complex SQL queries, which would, which would crawl the data and which would, which would analyze 40 billion records of data and bring up correct summary reports in a short span of time. And, uh, for that, you need a very good cluster. So we were having a good cluster, which was given to us at work and, uh, and, uh, the, the, the resources were good. So, but you were dealing with intense data. So building machine learning models is not easy. Or when you have such big data, you need to make sure that your assumptions are sound. So I have worked with big data and some of the tools that I've used are Microsoft Azure Databricks, PySpark, Python, SQL. When some freshers are entering into these industries, but uh, they have no knowledge because academic, I mean, it is not possible to stay in academic to learn more about big data because they do not have that much of resource as you mentioned, cluster and all those kind of things. So what would be their approach when a fresher is joining in such industries or when they are searching for jobs in such industries? So what would be the approach? They should try to get into a company like maybe Tata Consultancy Services because Tata Consultancy Services, they, uh, they uh, partner with Walgreens and, uh, and I managed a few TCS consultants when I was working at Walgreens as a senior data scientist. So as a consultant at TCS, you get the, if when you work at comp at big healthcare companies like Walgreens and CBS, you get the opportunity to work with large data sets and then you can own your skills in that way. So it's about landing a job at one of these com big companies in India, like maybe Tata Consultancy Services or Infosys or some of these companies. If you're coming from a tier three university, then it's probably easier than say landing a job at Google or Facebook in India. So if you can start off with TCS and if you can get into a partnership with a project in which where they're working with Walgreens or CVS in big data, then you can have the opportunity to work on bigger data sets. I mean, do they, do they post any such advertisement that uh, they are going to make an, may not be a job type contract, but they're making some contract that maybe a freshers can come and do some project on that. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's mostly for a job that they post. Okay. Let's say a freshers is joining and there is another experienced one is joining. So this became a competitive, right? So yeah. de definitely the chances for the freshers will be less in that case because he, he or Yeah, she but no, the freshers and the experienced candidate won't be interviewing for the same role. They'll be interviewing for different roles, right? The experienced candidate will be interviewing for a mid senior level role while the fresher will be interviewing for an entry level role. So it depends on the role. And uh, nowadays it's become very common to go to the US and pursue a master's degree. You know, and uh, so many people, the U.S. market is getting oversaturated with uh, with people from India who are pursuing their MS degree in data science and the latest computer science, information systems and so on. So I would advise that people, they should work for two, three years in India, get some work experience and then go to the U.S. so that they can stand out in the competitive job market with three years of experience in their own country. I would say. As, I mean, you, you have also experienced on U.S. academic system. So... Did you get any exposures working on big data and all those kind of advantages in, 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 in university? Yes, I did. Uh, I, 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 I've taken a data and visual analytics course where I was working with millions of records of data in my project, uh, in my data and visual analytics course. So you do get exposure with big data and different types of technologies like Georgia. AWS Athena, yeah, Georgia Tech, yeah, okay. like AWS Athena by Spark and uh, Hive and Hadoop and so on. So they have clustered, uh, they, they have clusters and in their, and in their clusters, you have performed the experiments. Yes, they do uh, provide free trials of uh, Google oh, Cloud okay. Platform or AWS Athena, which is offered university students because 
Amazon and Google and Azure. They have they offer free trials, free trials, student learning versions are there. So that's what I've been using. So from there you can so from there you get some hands-on experience and yes you do yes, yes but these things can be easily learned on the job as well like before I joined Walgreens I had not worked on Azure before so I just picked it up very easily these these frameworks are very easy to pick up the the core skills are machine learning statistical learning data mining analytics and so on which you need to build when uh, uh, students are learning those courses I mean they also need some hands-on experience actually only then they yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I would say, um, are you asking me how to become a data scientist? Exactly. So I would say uh, you can start by getting a bachelor's degree in computer science or mathematics or statistics or engineering or any engineering field is fine. And then uh, I would say uh, get work for two to three years as a data analyst where you can get experience with SQL or with Python. And then once you have experience with SQL and Python, then you can get a job as a data scientist, you know, and a data scientist typically requires a bachelor's degree and two years of experience. It's not an entry level role, but a data analyst is an entry level role. So you can get a data analyst role after graduation. So after working for two years as a data analyst, most people have the SQL and Python background necessary to become an entry level data scientist. And then you can get a job as a data scientist in a tech company and, and other big tech companies require mostly a master's degree along with two to three years of experience to become a data scientist. So that's for tech companies like Google and Facebook and other companies and all. And there are different levels of data science, but I think to, to enter, enter the data science job market, a good idea is to get a bachelor's degree in engineering or in mathematics or in computer science and work for two years as a data analyst and get experience with SQL and Python. And then you're in, during that time, learn about machine learning and there are a lot of resources which I've shared on LinkedIn about the different kinds of material that you can use to learn more about machine learning. There are a plethora of free information available online which you can use to learn more about the different types of machine learning, deep learning, reinforcement learning algorithms, and so on. A lot of people have this confusion, like, like what's the job, what's the role of a data scientist as well as a data engineer as well as the data analyst? Because uh, three of them deals with data. So, what are the differences? Like um, being an being a data scientist or a data engineer or a data analyst. Sure. So, data analyst they analyze and summarize data, build reports and build dashboards. And these this is a technical role which requires proficiency in SQL, Excel, Python, basic statistics and data visualization tools, like for example, Tableau or Power BI or Matplotlib or Seaborn. And it's a common entry level job, which requires a bachelor of science degree. Now a data scientist is not an entry level job. It's usually a mid senior level job, which a bachelor's degree and two years of work experience in analytics. Data scientists, they pre-process, analyze, summarize, and visualize structured and unstructured data. They build machine learning models, and they recommend optimal decision-making for companies. This role requires proficiency in statistics, probability, linear algebra, machine learning, programming and data visualization skills, sometimes deep learning and reinforcement learning frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch. And for some roles, it also requires knowledge of computer science technologies like DSA, algorithms and data structures. But what is important is business knowledge and understanding and the candidate should be skilled in cross-functional collaboration, have effective communication, teamwork, and business stakeholder management. So data scientist brings everything into the picture, not just programming, but also business knowledge and communication skills. Now, a data engineer, on the other hand, this job, in this job, they build efficient data pipelines, collect, store, and ingest data, and uh, process and move raw data into databases from raw data sources. This role typically focuses on big data technologies, ETL tools, databases, and scripting languages like Python, PySpark, Hive, Pig, uh, Tenth, and also like, uh, like Snowflake and so on. And this can be both an entry level and a mid senior level job with a bachelor's degree. So all three roles require a bachelor's degree, but the data analyst and the data engineer can be entry level roles, but a data scientist typically requires two years of experience after a bachelor's degree. 
so maybe someone who will join as an entry level they will be promoted to data scientist based on their yeah typically what what i have seen is that a data scientist typically requires at least 2 years of experience after a bachelor's degree unless you're working in a startup or some other company like that if you look at most big companies uh, job descriptions for data scientists it typically requires a bachelor's degree and 2 years of experience but a data engineer is more entry level and they they hire directly out of undergrad and uh, a data a, a data analyst is more entry level and they hire hire directly out of undergrad so many people they first become a data analyst and then they become a data scientist that's what i was i was a data analyst but i was more focused on statistics and predictive modeling rather than hardcore sql and visualization and then i became a data scientist so as you mentioned i mean uh, since my question is that how someone wants to become a data scientist but uh, i mean how to get the exposure let's say uh, I, i i have some different background but i am interested in data science then if i mean if, if i want to switch so i need some exposure is it possible now yes it's very much possible uh, data science is a big uh, big it is very much evolving field and there are a variety of wonderful programs in india which was where there is an mtech in data science and artificial intelligence my coworker at micron is pursuing an mtech in uh, in data science and artificial intelligence from bits pilani and uh, it's a renowned institution and it's got some amazing courses and uh, i've looked at the website and it's awesome and i would recommend mtech in data science and artificial intelligence from bits pilani if you want to become a machine learning software engineer or an ai engineer or an ai data scientist that was a program that you can go to then there's a program at georgia tech which i'm pursuing master of science and analytics you know online which you can do i can go for the on campus program but that would require you to move from india to america so it depends a lot on your background your personal background the resources that you have how much money you can afford to spend some universities even give you a scholarship or a free ship you know in india for most mtech programs you would require to go by the gate exam and get a good rank and then get into the iits or the nits so i would say for people who come from a poor background or not so financially accomplished uh, they are better off going for scholarships through gate or through such other other institutes you know yeah actually i was saying that what about participating in hackathon i mean although it will be very difficult for a for a new la- learner but uh... i would say it's good it's a good place to start but i would definitely recommend the rigor of a masters degree because uh, a masters degree is a degree at the end of the day and it's a masters degree and it gives and it helps you stand out amid, amongst the competition and if you get a masters degree from a top school like iit bombay or iit hyderabad or bits pilani then you can actually stand out amidst the competition or georgia tech any of the top us universities or top indian universities it helps you stand out in the application as compared to a person who doesn't have a masters in data science or who comes from a tier th- 3 university you go from tier 3 to tier 1 so you have that advantage so i have just one important question that do you think that degree is valuable yeah i think masters degree is certainly very valuable because a degree is more than just something that's written on a piece of paper if you get a good rank in gate like a top 200 rank or a top 500 rank or if you get an ms from a top university in the us then you are in a small pool of students who are first of all admitted amongst a, lo- a very competitive competition you are admitted in the from the crowd you are standing out and your learning skills in a way that is vetted by the best in the world taking some of the best courses that are in existence today challenging courses which will help you to stretch your mind and to push yourself in ways that you've never pushed yourself before so it will enable you to explore new directions of research learn the state of the art technologies and it's a it's a, it's like a window to the latest research which is going on in top research labs like google or facebook or amazon because many of these companies they network with the top universities and they allow research internships or business internships for their data science and analytics students so you get a network a wonderful network of like a, a georgia tech or a columbia or a harvard or an iit or a bits pilani in india so you get this network of top universities which you would never get had you been alone in your home you would and it would be much tougher without the masters degree than it would be with a masters degree so i think that investment is thanks for giving such insightful distinction 
but uh, if you can share that uh, the job market nowadays is very difficult so but still i am asking this in this competitive market if uh, is there still any hope for freshers i mean is there, i mean only for freshers is there any vacancies if some freshers want to join then how he or she should start they should make a plan they should make a five year plan that they can start planning that they can join a company like uh, tcs or infosys because to be honest companies like these that are mass recruiters they give you a job maybe the salary won't be that good but you can start your company in maybe the it or it or some software engineering or any such field and then gain 2 3 years of work experience and then on the side upskill participate in hackathons participate in kaggle projects data science maybe do a masters degree online at the same time as you're working and then get the skills and then apply to product based companies and then you can increase your salary by 100% 200% if you move from a service based company to a product based company so you should plan your career in such a way that you're giving 5 years 3 years at a product at a service based company and then after that move to a product based company like that you should plan it anything with proper planning you can achieve success so thanks chirag so we ju- we are at the end of the of our session today so but before leaving this i just have one questions which i usually ask to all of my guests that uh, if you have any important pieces of advice that you want to share mainly to the college students or school students those who are just starting their career so i would say uh, cultivate a culture of resilience passion hard work find something that you're passionate about in life whether it is coding whether it is data science whether it's mechanical whether it's civil anything that you like doing find passion in doing that and once you find something that you're passionate about which also pays a good amount of money and by which you can build a career for yourself you find yourself that you've made a strong base or foundation for you in life which can last you a few years to manage on your own so uh, i would say find your passion and work hard work hard at becoming a good data scientist work hard at becoming a good data engineer work hard at becoming a good data analyst don't chase big companies don't chase big salaries don't chase big job titles just focus on making yourself better how you can become a better data scientist how you can crack technical interview then you will get a great job if you make yourself strong if you make yourself well if you know the fundamentals of technology as well then you can achieve success it's hard work and smart work and dedication and discipline over a long period of time that makes you successful it's very much true that you have to work over a long period of time i mean lot of patience actually required that is a, there are many people they are very much hard working but they don't have that much of patience anyway thank you thanks for joining our today's podcast uh, i hope that you have enjoyed this uh, session and uh, i believe that our viewers will also mainly our students will also find it engaging and uh, insightful so looking forward to talk with you in the near future on different topics so by that time see you once again bye thank you thank you, thank you very much ayan for your time thank you thank you for having me